The world is not enough, then. This was the last Bond film. So the 19th is the last Bond film of the 20th century. Uh, I thought you were going to say this was the last Bond film starring Pierce Brosnan that anyone gave two f***s about. I think I gave one f*** about it, to be honest. This starts with the longest pre-credit sequence. I think maybe the yes. new one has beaten it or has even evened up with it, but it's fucking long. Yeah. Well, it wasn't meant to be long. No, it was meant to cut after he comes out of that window, which feels like... It a- was meant to cut when mm. he dangles out of a window and then they did the focus group and the focus group said, what? You can't <laughs> have a man walk, come out of a window and call that a pre-credit sequence in a Bond film. <laughs> Just anyone look back at that. The, the thing where the guy jumps off the cliff and they open their parachute. This is literally, this is like he's just gone a zip world in North Wales. <laughs> and this is like the tutorial bit before they let you do the proper one. And they're gone, and now it's time to do the song. No, no, you do another stunt. Now, now. I was thinking, like, I was thinking, when when's the chase? When When, when is the chase? Yeah. There's going to be a like, chasey bit in it. Oh, no, okay. It's... He's just going to do a sort of amateur abseiling. That's My favourite thing about this is that they were they were toying with titles for the film, and um, mm. one of the titles they were rumoured to use was going to be Bond Two Thousand. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh. Dan was in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't think of. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This mobile phenomenon has shaken the gaming landscape to its very core. With Raid you can now get a total console level experience wherever you go. Some of my favourite champions include Raglan, who can revive a single target, fill their turn meter and give them a bit of health. Plus it only has a two turn cooldown, making her the fastest reviver in town. And then of course there's Coronar. This legendary overgrown beast man is one of the strongest tank controllers in Raid. He's all about decreasing your enemy's turn meter, weakening them with debuffs and just being a general nuisance for your foes. He's fab. And there's a ton happening in Raid this month. They've got special events every single day, including an entirely new event for the summer solstice. It's called the Path of Light and you'll be able to explore three branching paths to get the rewards you want the most. On top of that, there's some awesome new champions coming out and a set of skins for the amazing Trunda Gilt Mallet. They look amazing and I can't wait to get my hands on them. But wait, there's more! Raid's currently running a special Deliana Chase event where you can get your hands on the amazing Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction, just by logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July 20th and you'll get Deliana for free. That's it! Deliana is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game and can help carry your team past many of Raid's tougher challenges. You don't want to miss her. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free, epic champion, Rector Drath. 200k of silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. The gifts keep coming! All new players, listen up! Once you're in game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. Simple. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. And it's that easy, just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and now, on with the show. Ah, there you are. I just can't think of anything, I mean the, the, the way the sort of late 90s were obsessed with the year 2000. Yeah, well this is quite prominent because obviously the first um... Ten minutes. We have a massive footage of the of the Millennium Dome, which has mm. obviously been constructed. Then, isn't it? So yeah, and they were so yeah. excited, but, but, but they put fuck all in it. <laughs> I never went to it when it was. I never went, but I know people who did, and it was just like a, a giant man statue. And oh yeah, yeah, a, a, a ball pool. I think that was. To it. be fair, where else are you going to go in the world to see a giant man statue and a ball pool? If you want those two things, there's nowhere better to go. Well, Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Um, but we, we start in Bilbao, uh, where Bond goes to see a Swiss banker. How do we know it's a Swiss banker? Every line mentions that he's a Swiss banker. Mm. <laughs> yes. If you can't trust a Swiss banker, what's the world come to? Looking at our present situation, strictly as a banker. And we know how difficult that can be for a Swiss banker. <laughs> and we know how hard that is for a Swiss banker. I, I, if I was him, I'd go, what, is, what does that mean? With that said, 
Hmm. He's, it's a good thing he does he's this respect because based on his office that looks like fucking Trotter's independent traders or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really low it's budget, just, isn't it? Yeah. It's really, the whole, the, I'm going to say this right now, the production design of this film, we are, I assume they must have brought some like work experience kid in, but no, it's the same bloke who's been doing it for years. Yeah. But the, this film looks fucking awful. It does. From a production point of view. Yeah. And this is the first bit, like a really grotty, he looks like the agent from the aristocrats <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Bond comes in, he says, right, I'm going to my dad <laughs> and then the cat gets what do you call that like that um bond 2000 bond 2000 <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so he's not he gets the you know the receipt for the money and then he says well it's not the money i didn't i didn't come for that i, I oh, there was a bit with the, with the sexy accountant lady who uh oh yeah the cigar girl yeah. she's cigar called, girl she's yeah. called because she offers oh. a cigar yeah <laughs> You offer right, one right. cigar. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I'm getting sick of this place. It's everybody comes in here and asks me, and they just, uh, do you want a cigar? And they're like, no, nah, yeah, suck your tits. And I get, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going to go and train up. I'm going to do an HND in assassinations. <laughs> I do yeah. like Pierce's delivery, though, when she says, would you like to check my figures? And he says, would you like to check my figures? Oh, I'm sure they're perfectly round enough. Sex, I like sexist. I, I love Pierce. Um, yeah, he's great. <laughs> Poor Pierce Brosnan. What mm. a shit show. He's great. He and the films around him were just a pile of crap, with the exception of Goldeneye. Yeah. He's doing his best. He he's he's, he's the perfect sort of perineum between Roger Moore and Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, the yeah, taint. Yeah. He's got Sean's hard edge, and he's got Roger's ability to be suave and do quips. Mm. I think there's times though when he does a line like that, when he does his naughty little lines. Mm. Roger Moore used to do him a lot of the time. He used to do him as a throwaway thing with just the one eyebrow, and they came off a slightly more hard edge. Whereas mm. slightly, weirdly, Pierce Brosnan, he's not quite this bad, but sometimes he's a bit like, oh, madam, he's <laughs> he's slightly. He's slightly yeah, more towards Frankie Howard than Roger Moore was. Sometimes <laughs> no. I've got to note this film does get a slightly carry on at times, doesn't it? So, yeah. yeah, when they're just communicating nothing but euphemisms. Chocolates, an engagement ring. I thought you might enjoy one of these. I know exactly where to put that. When they search him, when he comes in, he puts a gun down on the desk. So he's clean, you know. And then the the, the banker's like, well, strictly he's talking as a banker, you know, because uh, I'm a banker, everyone. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's my thing and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, the odds, the odds for you getting out of this room are, you know, pretty bad. And Bond's like, well, you haven't taken into account my hidden assets. And he presses a button on his glasses, and the gun explodes. Imagine yeah. Q going, here's a gun. Oh, yeah, it explodes. Aren't these things supposed to shoot people? <laughs> yes. Why are you making exploding guns? I mean, that could go wrong in many ways. It's already a weapon. Exactly. <laughs> Why is it going to be a different weapon? This is cyanide, but it's also a sandwich filling. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that one, mate. The thing, I guess this was one of those things I'm willing to give a pass at, because it is kind of... The, the joke with Q had been by this point for decades. Here's a gadget that will only be useful in one specific scenario mm. that will definitely oh, got, come up in the next three. We've got a great one of those coming up, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then the room's cleared. Bond grabs the banker and says, Right, tell me. And the banker's like, Oh, I can't. And then he says, Well, we'll protect you. And he goes, OK. And as he says that, a comedy knife goes into the back of his neck. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the hilt is sticking out. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. They might as well have added the dang sound effect. Yeah, they? why not just shoot him? It's, it's so ridiculous. But then uh, the police are coming very quickly. Not like that. Mm. So then he, he, he the way he's going to get out, he smashes the window and he ties a, a window sash. I wanted to ask you about this window sash, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's on a window, but yeah. apparently it's long enough to go down like a four-story <laughs> building, <laughs> like fifty feet long. Yeah. Oh, did anyone is also... it elasticated? Is it elasticated? Oh, God, imagine if he'd have gone back up. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> the police stormed the room and he'd just go out the window. He's like, whoop. Oh, he had me twang. Oh, he had me eye out. I'm a Swiss policeman. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone notice as well, by the way, when the banker, the Swiss banker, says to Bond, please take a seat, Bond looks at the chair really distrustfully. Yeah. He's like, well, that was odd. He's like, is that a chair? It <laughs> could be a man. Uh, anyway, he makes it down to the ground with the window sash that's a, a bit about 37 feet long. <laughs> uh, does his tie and then walks off. And that was supposed to be where we're going to get the opening sequence. I genuinely... I what say, a, yeah. Can you imagine if that was it? It would be flat out the worst 
pre credit sequence of all time. It's there's nothing happens. <laughs> I can't <laughs> imagine when you're filming it. You yeah. got you got even as you're filming it, you got this is bollocks. <laughs> I had a big problem. Um, with the opening of the movie, and it became clear the problem when I first previewed it. When I previewed the film, the Bilbao scene really just didn't cut it. People thought, what? That's the opening of a Bond film? So I knew I'd made a mistake, and so... So then he goes into the office and meets mm-hmm. Sir Robert King, um, the man who owned the money that Bond got back from Bilbao. And he, there's a great moment here where M goes, oh, Bond, this is Sir Robert King. We studied law together at Oxford and Bond to do the Partridge Shrug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes anyway you're the man that got my money be careful Em I might steal him and have him come work for me and he should be like what a uh, fucking oil company <laughs> no yeah I'll go work at the forecourt shall I you prick <laughs> yeah. not, it's not really my field to be honest man. no I'm more of a cold blooded killer if you don't mind <laughs> Um, so he goes off to go and get his money and M's like, oh, well, oh, Robert King's great, you know, he's really great. And then Bond's like, oh, well, I'll make myself a drink. This is really interesting, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then he yeah. notices there's some frothing substances on his fingers. And at first he's thinking, oh, no, the fucking syphilis has come back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but no, it's not. It's Because he's, he, he's touched the money, uh, it's reacting yeah. with the ice cube. And this, yeah. this is my favourite moment of pointless British bu- bureaucracy. Because Bond goes, King, the money, and races off. And, and M buzzes Money Penny, who's like three feet away from her, and says, <laughs> Money Penny, stop King. Also, only about 12 seconds have passed before Pierce Brosnan runs out the door. He's definitely going to catch up with the, all due respect, elderly, slightly red faced diabetes gentleman. Yeah, easily. Oh, there was a bit just now we, 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 we um, glossed over. When. Um, uh, He's in the, the Swiss banker's <laughs> grotty little office. Oh, yeah. Someone gets a drop on him, but then a sniper shoots him through the window. Oh, yes. And uh, he doesn't know who it is. When M says, like, um, who is that sniper? He goes, I don't know. But he says, she must be working for someone. He goes, yeah, that's, that's a fa- fairly safe bet. Because you don't get amateur snipers a lot of the time. No. Just Open no, mic sniper. <laughs> I thought so I'd turn up and do five. I had a big problem um, with the opening. That's the opening of a Bond film. So I knew I'd made a mistake. So Bond chases after King. King gets is, is already in the room with the money and it all blows up. Fairly hefty explosion too for what turns out is a bunch of notes covered in piss. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, then it turns out there's also cigar girls out on the Thames on yeah. the boat. What is going on? What you've is this? You've bombed a bunch of money. Yeah. You've also sent a slight... Who are you trying to... It, you're just trying to kill a banker. It's not Vigo the Carpathian trying to kill you. <laughs> just... I mean, that shows to me that Renard is not confident in plan A. Yeah. I also and plan like... B already fucked up earlier, so he hasn't even got the best sniper. No. I, feel, I also feel like you shouldn't be able to just drive a boat right up to outside the headquarters of British Intelligence and shoot through the window. I'm pretty sure that would also be harder than that. Also, they're on the 12th floor. Mm. How the fuck has she got the angle on this? She's in the river. The building's quite high. She's mm. going to like, oh, I'm going to really shoot this prick in the ankles. That's the best <laughs> shot she's going to get. <laughs> but then Bond races into Q's lab and jumps uh, into this it. stupid fucking little boat. It's so stupid. I hate it so much. I don't mind the boat. I'll tell you what I don't like mm. is that they've gone and put... Oh, it's a good thing we had this boat slot in the middle of the building. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because that's supposed to be Q's holiday boat for fishing. <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah. Is it something I said? No, something you destroyed my fishing boat for my retirement. Which, you know, I don't believe because it looks like he can't get out of a bath without help, never mind getting in a boat and going fishing. Yeah. Uh, and it's armed to the teeth, so I don't know what he's fishing for. <laughs> megalodon or something. Fucking megalodon, yeah. <laughs> Put that on the back of the boat and make it back to shore. And yeah, it's got a little, like Dante's has got a little log flume thing that he shoots out of. Not, not like that. Yeah, imagine being so thick. Oh, I'm really good at this. I'm building a boat. Where? Oh, halfway up a building indoors. <laughs> well, don't then. Build I'm going to find and kill and fuck the Megalodon. All right, this all sounds like a plan. <laughs> but if, I feel like this whole thing, it sounded better in the planning meeting. Mm-hmm. Like a super high-tech boat chasing someone down the Thames. Really really quiet Thames, but the um, the boat looks stupid, doesn't it? Because it's too small. Yeah. P- P- just... look, look, it looks really big in it. He, he looks like he's on a fairground ride at a particularly grim theme park like Peppa Pig's Underworld or something. 
<laughs> he's basically doing a car chase in a Nissan Micra at this point. <laughs> yes, but he's too big for it. He's, mm. It generally looks like it looks like or oh, one of those little ride along things outside the supermarket. You put twenty p in, and it just looks weird. Uh, like, we're in a suit, which doesn't help. And the chase just goes on and on. It's really long. Also, it submerges. Why would it need to submerge? I mean, I think Q's like, well, I'm going to go fishing and I'm going to fucking kill myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the long game. What are you building there, Q? Oh, it's a fishing boat. Oh. <laughs> when are you going to stand on this boat to fish? Where, uh, it'll no room, be fine. There's no room for a rod in that boat. It'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm starting to worry about Major Boot Rods. He seems sad. He's listening to a lot of Morrissey. He's listening to a lot of Morrissey. He's... He the boat's yeah. called he... Dignitas One. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Q's so out, livid with him. When he gets back, he's like, I was gonna f- I'm going to have to jump under a fucking train now. <laughs> And that's undignified. Yeah. I wanted to drown. Fortunately, I've built a pit that is I can push this button and I'll descend into a pit and die. There's, there's, and then there's, there's three and then, bears I haven't fed for three weeks in there. Yeah. And then I'm gonna leave you with a frankly insufferable John Cleese. And, and then you'll uh, want to kill yourself. And then yeah. Then the living will envy the dead. I'll see you in the pit. It does look like you descended into hell. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway, so the, the, the cigar girl sees a hot air balloon and thinks, I'll yeah. make a quick escape on yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> this boat chase is so boring. How, how, how do we get up the ante? Let's have a hot air balloon. Yeah. Nature's slowest transport. Jesus Christ. Nature's? Yeah, it's nature. Yeah. Okay. Hot air right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen a, f- a fine cluster of hot air balloon eggs <laughs> in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> you swarm. You see them over Bristol sometimes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she gets in the hot air balloon and thinks, Right, let's put this to 90, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And then realises it can't yeah. go more than a mile an hour. <laughs> and I guess we get surrounded by helicopters and Bond's like, oh, I can protect you, I can save, you know, I can help you. And then she starts pointing the gun at the canister and he goes, I love the way Pierce goes, no, don't, don't blow us up. Don't do it. Don't blow us up. I can protect you. Do you understand? I can protect you. And she says, not from him. And the hot air balloon explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the credits kick in. Thank Christ. Yeah, yeah thank Christ. Uh, uh, we're only 10 minutes from the end of the film now, so that's a nice thing. <laughs> yeah. Listen to me! You can't get away. We can make a deal. Just tell me who's behind this. Who you're working for. Don't do it! Don't blow us up! Hello, boy! Yeah, it's a funeral for Robert King and Bond's been invited and the whole of MI6. Not sure why Bond's there. You'd think Bond would want to stay away, really, from his part in it. Yeah, you probably want to not have the entire British intelligence community in one place at the same time. <laughs> it's like when all the people who know the recipe to Coca-Cola aren't allowed on the same plane. <laughs> That's like if your son died in a television stunt that went wrong and Noel Edmonds turns up to the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are they right now? I know they have to move headquarters. Last one blow it up. So, but where, where is this place? It's in Scotland, Scotland. somewhere. Oh, it's like hence the tartan too. carpets. Yeah, it's yeah. got a very baroque uh, vibe about it. Okay. I couldn't take the briefing seriously when they're like, "We we will not bow to terrorism," and underneath them is a tartan carpet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All, all the carpets. Every time the car, the carpet says anything, go, "I'm a Scottish carpet." Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I just like to say I agree completely with Agent C or Jimmy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Michael Kitchen tells us the money was dipped in fertilizer bomb, but the water on Bond's hand started a chemical reaction. The lapel pin King was wearing was a duplicate, which had a um, radio transmitter that triggered the blast. And then we get my favourite line in the whole film from uh, Colin Salmon as Robinson. Robinson, he says it must have been someone close to King, and the only lead committed suicide on a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> we know. It was someone close to King, and our only lead committed suicide on that balloon. But given the size of King's organisation, it could be anyone, anywhere. So then Bond is told that he's not involved in this um, case because he hasn't been cleared for active duty because he's hurt his shoulder because his arm's in a brace, not in a brace, a sling. So he goes to see Dr Molly Warmflash. Is that her name? Yeah. (laughs) It really is. 
Yeah. Okay. I um, you called it Molly several times. I just didn't. Warm think flash. Uh, warm flash. Yeah. She it's informs him that he has got a dislocated collarbone with damaged tendons, and if they snap, he'll be out of action for weeks. So Bond says, "Look, uh, he, th- he chucks the X-ray across the room, mm-hmm. and then says, "Look, I need a clean bill of health." And she's like, "Oh well," that, and then he starts feeling her up, which is. I was watching this with yeah. my son the other day, and he said, "That is disgusting." <laughs> He's 11 yeah. years old. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. they, they are at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are at work. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very inappropriate in every sense. He fills her up, and then uh, when when she's like, oh, we can't do that, that's really bad, he just says, why don't we uh, skirt the issue? It's like, oh. And then she says, yeah. you will phone me, won't you? And he's like, well, at some point, yeah. 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 This time. Well, yeah. <laughs> when I, I get a bad again. blood <laughs> test back, probably, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I'd love it was a Bond film that was just a supercut of all the times he's been called into HR. Yeah. <laughs> just gradually getting worse and worse. Like, okay, we to- starting off with just like, we told you that you've got to have a Walter PPK, not that damn Beretta. All the way to, you pulled a woman's skirt down at work. <laughs> so then he goes to see Jim uh. Henson's Q. <laughs> Piper first, isn't it? You have the, the, the bagpipe guy, which was um, how bagpipe. handy is that anywhere other <laughs> than this point. exact? I mean, because the only person you'd want to shoot in that scenario would be the guy with the bagpipes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Bond comes in and says, "But I suppose we have to all pay the piper sometime." Q. So pipe down, double A lot of pipe gags, none mm. of which oh, were suck my God. pipe, bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Desmond, um, I don't think we can say yeah. that in a Bond film. Yeah, you got it. Uh, I didn't even know we were making a film. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Why won't I die? <laughs> yeah. Let me die. <laughs> uh, which, he got his wish though, so that's fine. <laughs> I think before this film came out. There's a new Bond film coming. It'll be opening next Christmas, 1999. That's going to be a great way to start the millennium, isn't it? Yeah, in an act of um, irony, maybe, uh, poor Desmond Owen died by crashing a car into a tree. (laughs) It it was the Lotus. Um, No, bless him. Briefcase. Shows a Heineken in 0.4 seconds. Q, why would James Bond need all these? They're not for him. They're for a holiday. Yeah. It does feel like an exit. Mm. So, mm. I mean, it would have been weird if he came back. You know what? Last time I saw you, you were pretty final. Mm. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm back out of the bear pit. All right. I was wondering, <laughs> is it a bear John, pit please? or yeah. is it a deep fryer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the end of Terminator 2. His big fat hand comes out and gives him a thumbs up. <laughs> the bears ate two of my fingers. They were full. Then they were fine. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> they ate one hand and hibernated for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but Q's upset yeah. because uh, obviously Bond's wrecked his fishing boat, as we discussed. Um, yeah. So, And then he says, I'd like you to meet the young man that's replacing me, which I think is quite a funny joke because it's mm, a, it. a middle-aged John Cleese. Uh, and then he says, "If you're Q, does that make him R?" And then Q says, "No, he's a cut." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, oh. it's John Cleese um, yeah. who uh, does does his Basil faulty bit, really. Yeah, but this is also uh, was it Sainsbury's advert era, John Cleese, isn't it? Yes, so, yes, the just... legendary Sainsbury's advert they had to pull because everyone hated them. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this and this and this. They're all part of Sainsbury's low price guarantee, and it's practically a complete secret. Because everyone here is meant to faithfully nice to shout about it. He's just saying things like, right. Yeah. I mentioned Sainsbury's once, but I think I got away with it. <laughs> he gets a pair of x-ray glasses and a coat that turns into a giant golf ball. Oh, and the x-ray glasses. Doesn't it look like he's going clubbing in the year 2000? It does, yeah. yeah. Again, he should yeah. have his tips done. Or, yeah, he should, yeah. either, either that he looks really dyslexic. Um... <laughs> John Cleese is doing this thing where he's like, you put the right arm in here, the left arm in there, and then yeah. Desmond Ryan's like, oh, just pull the works. fucking thing, you cunt. <laughs> and and the, the <laughs> coat turns into a giant golf ball. The purpose of which is never explained, really, is it? Or is it just you meant to figure it out? I, I know we see it later on, but he never says, what, why have I got this? What's it for? Yeah, it- I mean, uh, have you lost it? <laughs> <laughs> Just kill me, Bond. Take this pen and throw it in my throat. <laughs> Have it right into my eye socket. Why don't you kill yourself with these hands? <laughs> I can't get them round my throat. Um, but it's quite a sweet moment, as I say, because Bond then goes, you're not retiring anytime soon, are you? And then Q says, now, listen, pay attention, 007. 
which is a nice moment. I've always told you two things. Right. I object with one of these. Never yes. let them see you bleed. I can't imagine Desmond Llewellyn saying that in a million <laughs> years. Um, and then yeah. he says, always have an escape plan. And then he goes down to the either the deep frat fryer or the, the pit of bears. <laughs> It's just descending into hell. It looks like. But they stick yeah. with him for too long to the point where he's <laughs> yeah, like, "Exactly, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm looking. Up, I've gone through the floor." <laughs> Bond is in the archives reading about Electra King because uh, we saw Electra mm. King at the funeral, mm. and then he does the weirdest thing. She's talking about her kidnapping and she's crying. He pauses it and then starts kind of poking her tears in a really disgusting way. I know. Yeah. I was thinking, does he think this is touch screen? Well, one of the monitors is, and it blatantly isn't. No, 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 no. There's somebody just <laughs> off with a fucking mouse with yeah. Windows 95 <laughs> running on it. Yeah. He points out of the screen and it opens. It goes, boop. I'm like, nah, the you fucking technology this film is all over the shop. It is, because this is proper <laughs> massive, chunky, like, <laughs> just massive big things. And then the next one, he's got a fucking holograph thing that you can have. Uh, Interactive, yeah. Which, yeah. Which we don't it's, have now. <laughs> it's like, oh, we use this when we stormed the Death Star. What do you use that one for? Just... <laughs> That's just for wood. We sent an X-wing up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he goes to CM, who's having a chat with MI6 top brass. I'd like to see in the background of here just Q trying to hang himself and failing in the background, <laughs> and no one drawing it to attention to it. With a f- yeah, with his fishing rod. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, with the window caught me on. Why is this thirty-five feet long? <laughs> yeah, he just falls straight <laughs> on his ass. <laughs> Why? But then we cut to a giant hologram of Robert Carlyle's head. <laughs> yeah, very, very PS2 level uh, imagery. And I love the writing here. Michael Kitchen's first line is, his only goal is chaos. <laughs> so no further questions from yep. a writing point of view. Yep. And, and he's an anarchist and an evil terrorist, and he was responsible for the kidnap of Electra. Um, so after speaking to Robert, M sent 009 to kill Renard, who put a bullet in his head. The only problem was he didn't die. Instead, the bullet's stuck in his brain and it's slowly killing him. Now, Dean, I'd like to ask you some questions about this. <laughs> please, please, I have notes. I have so, notes. so she says, Molly Warmflash emerges from the darkness, you know, doing up her skirt, sort of sweeping the jizz off her. Um, uh, now, she says, the further the bullet goes, the stronger he gets. He can push himself harder than any normal man and feels no pain. However, he's lost the sense of touch and smell. The bullet will kill him, but he'll grow stronger every day until he dies. Dean, Dr. Dean Burnett, brain doctor, yep. is this true? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> but i got to give him props. Like the, yeah. it says, it's lodged in his medulla oblongata. Um, exactly how a bullet would get there without killing you, I don't know. But stranger things have happened. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a very weird feel, the old neuroscience one. So, you know, I'll, I'll, also, it's doing the whole slowly moving in thing, like Tony Stark's heart shrapnel yeah uh, which the things tend to stop like a few seconds after they've been yeah. fired rather than keep yeah. moving i was gonna ask if you've got <laughs> shot in the head and you're still alive and it's moving further into your brain when you just yeah. lie when you lie down just lie the other way around it'll come out like earwax yeah there should be a fairly straight line <laughs> given the way it went in but, yeah it's, but it's yeah. a tube so, of head meat yeah. and the medulla i've got it it is the place it's a it's a sort of a hub of the brain where all the sensory information gets relayed to where it's needed so Yes, if you disrupt it, you would lose sense of touch and pain and stuff. But it's also important for other things like proprioception, knowing where your body is, and conscious muscle control and right. balance. So it should logically make him a far worse terrorist. <laughs> he should just be lying there twitching, going, ah! And that- <laughs> but would it make him stronger, Dean? You'd make him more chaotic, I guess, given that that's his theme. But, uh- so he'd basically be like a drunk bloke at a bus stop. What a <laughs> yeah. brave... Bond villain for this film. <laughs> the bloke is lying down going, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can I ask a question about this? Because when we meet Renard Please. in a bit later, he's um, he, d- he does it to Electra. And I'm mm. thinking, if he can't feel nothing, can he become tumescent? <laughs> I would say no, personally. I, I mean, I have the note... <laughs> Even if you don't lose a sense of touch, having a bullet in your brain which is killing you should be a bit of a libido dampener at the best mm. of times. But yeah, I think that's his fetish. <laughs> yes. Imagine if this whole film is different. It's like, that we sent 009 to kill him, he put a bullet up his anus. <laughs> the bullet is slowly going up his anal canal and it's going to reach his heart eventually. <laughs> but it's actually resting on his prostate right now. He's got permanently engorged. <laughs> A permanent boner. That's his that's, special power. That's his thing, yeah. That's, his, that's how you recognise him. 
the erection reflex is a lot, a lot of space in the spine, so he might actually still be able to. Just won't feel anything. So. But yeah, but how he might not be able to get aroused because he can't feel a, yeah. you know, touching his balls in it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, a lot of guys get aroused and just sat on a bus. It just happens sometimes. <laughs> he probably, maybe, can get it up, but he probably wouldn't be able to do anything with it because he can't feel it. So, what does it say about being shot up the arsehole? Uh, that's f- further research required. <laughs> yeah. Then we go to Azerbaijan. Bond turns up in his little toy car. Yeah. yeah. And then Emma's told him specifically not to shag Electra as well. Yes. <laughs> just, she but... says, for fuck's sake, just, <laughs> just put it, leave it in your pants, will you? Yeah. And that's why, was it, Holly had to, Molly had to sweep it off because it's dust at this point. It's just yeah. constant. Yeah. yeah. It's got the fluid left. So he arrives at Electra's pipeline site. And, uh, he's, he, we, not we meet, a euphemism. But... Not, not a euphemism. Yeah. We meet Davidoff. Mm. Clearwater. <laughs> um, he tells Bond they're having problems with the villagers and that, um, that he's told Electra to stay away for her own safety. But of course, she turns up in a helicopter. Oh, also on the way in, as he's driving up to the, the house, we um, we do see the Chekhov's flying chainsaw. Chekhov's flying chainsaw. Oh, yeah. What are these things for? They're for I trimming trees. Oh, yeah, what? no, trees. they're not. They are. <laughs> they're stupid. It does seem like overkill to have this massive flying chainsaw just to cut back a few branches. But... Well, this feels like someone's had an idea of, oh, I tell you what would be good. Big buzz saws on the bottom of a of a helicopter. Write that in. I've googled it. It's real. Is it? Yeah, it prunes it. trees. It prunes trees. Yeah, and it says yeah, it's um, the ah, the major clients tend to be um, uh, like electrical companies that have power cables that can't get interfered with. So ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we mm, are. Fair enough. I'll take it back. Yeah, yeah. Electra <laughs> says she needs to go skiing, check on the pipeline, and then Bond goes, I've always wanted to check the pipeline. <laughs> that seems like an impractical setup. You can only check your pipeline if you can ski on a massive mountain. Yeah. Mm. And they, they they ski down the mountain, and then we get the exciting uh, Parahawk oh, sequence. God. Yeah, what, is, what is this? Oh, my Lord. How is this boring? Because in so theory, boring. <laughs> it should be great. It skis. They're mm. always good sequences. Mm. They've got these... Whatever skidoos that fly, flying it should be mowers. great. Hmm. Yeah, fa- yeah, fan-powered sleds or something with the parachutes on them. It's a really strange setup. It should yeah. be cool, and yeah. it's rubbish. It's so dull. There's been so many yeah. memorable ski sequences in bomb films, and this one's so fucking dull. Well, they all get blown up one by one. There's a big avalanche, and Bond luckily has that coat that turns into a giant golf ball. Why has he got this with him? Right, because the first, because when he lands in Azerbaijan. That's how you say it, Azerbaijan. Mm. Is it's like proper hot desert, right? Now I yeah. know in that part of the world you go higher up and there's a lot of snow, but he wouldn't have brought his fucking big puffer jacket with him. No, you and they've gone straight quite... there. They've gone straight there from the from the desert bit to the snow bit. And it's like, oh, so I got to think I brought my fucking puffer. <laughs> <laughs> so then he goes to uh, Flash Casino, owned by Valentin Sakovsky from Goldeneye. No, right. Genuinely, this is the first bit I went like, this is not what a casino and a bun film is supposed to look no, like. No, it's not. It's, it looks no, it's... like an old people's home yeah. that they yeah. moved some roulette tables into. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, great... look, look, it looks like the dining hall in that office from earlier. Like, just the yeah. building, they, they go and have yeah, lunch yeah, in the canteen yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, it's very not casino y. No, and he puts on his x ray glasses, and we get to see bras and pants and guns. Which I feel would be useful in other times too. You only mm. use them in this one occasion. Like those, those are pretty, pretty useful things. Surely. Mm. Ah, then, by the by. So then, Bullion turns up, played by Goldie. Yeah, I forgot he was in this. Yeah, and he says, "Mr. Zagowski will be delighted to see you." He's not bad, is <laughs> it? No, he's, he's fine. Um, he's pretty good, actually. In fact, I think him and Robbie Coltrane are a weirdly great double act. <laughs> they really yes, are. I really enjoy them. They're pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, I remember at the time everyone was like, oh, he's going to be... I remember the papers saying, oh, gold is going to be like a new Jaws because of his gold teeth. No, he's they didn't not, do anything He's just that. like old goldie. He just loves gold. <laughs> Bond, James Bond. Meet Nina and Verushka. So, Zagoski sat in his office feeding caviar to some sexy ladies called Mina and Verushka. Bond says, Valentin, the girls need to leave. And then Valentin says, Bull, give them an inch. And I'll be like, <laughs> don't tell everyone. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah. then the, he, he throws the um, flag he captured from one of those flying lawnmower things. And Zakoski goes, I think we both need a drink. 
He says, this is Russian Special Services Atomic Energy Anti-Terrorist Unit. That's a long, that's a long that's title, isn't it? Sounds like a So Solid crew. I've got a shit, by the way. Oh, I've never had it. It looks horrible. I, yeah. my, I'm yeah. to, my sister, oh, this is definitely going to betray my class aspirations, but my sister, when she was little, would only eat caviar for large swathes of time. Oh, my God. What? Yeah, she Lord had, Snooty. Like, Where'd you get it in that, in that, yeah. in that time and place? Tesco's. 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 caviar? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh. There was caviar and there was, like, off-brand caviar. Right. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So it's like the Tesco value Coca-Cola. Roller caviar. <laughs> <laughs> Panda caviar. <laughs> And then uh, he's talking oh. to Valentin, and then he spots on the CCTV the Electra's walked in. So they both go and see her, and Bond's like, what are you doing out of the house? <laughs> yeah, much, yeah. Basically what he says. Yeah. And she says, I refuse to be scared. And then she plays this card game with Valentin for a million dollars. So stupid. <laughs> so ridiculous. And she loses. Yeah, it's, who, who can pick up the highest card? That's, that's yeah. literally what it is. It is. Yeah, it might as well have been, how many sweeties are in this jar? <laughs> well, no, 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 there has to be something they can rig, because... Yeah. Okay, I... everyone, we're going to play Twister. Okay, so hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> Sophie Marceau is going to play Twister with Robbie Coltrane, <laughs> yeah. and she's going to lose. Hang on, <laughs> something's up for you. <laughs> I think <laughs> she's bribing him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she loses, and then uh, Bond tells... He says to her, you don't have to do this, and she says... There's no point living if you can't feel alive. There's no point in living if you can't feel alive. Which will come important later. Well, does it? Well, uh, <laughs> this is such a ma- mound of porridge. This whole section. So I'm just like, yeah, well, this is so dull, guys. Um, so then, Electra draws the Queen of Hearts, who loses, and then um, she turns to Bond and asks if he wants to come back to her place. And he says, this is a game I can't afford to play. She's like, I don't charge. Yeah, I'm just sure. <laughs> Hang on. You dirty bastard. <laughs> but then we cut to the devil's breath. Welcome to the devil's breath. For thousands of years, Hindu pilgrims have journeyed to this holy place to witness the wonder of the miracle of the natural flames that never die, and to test their devotion to God by holding the scalding rocks in their hands. Which you really want, don't you? Yes! So Renard is displeased with the failure of the flying lawnmower's attack, (laughs) and uh, (laughs) Davidoff arranged it, so Davidoff's in with Renard, and another man called Dr. Arkoff, who's a big fat man. (laughs) I just want you to remember that. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it comes important later. So, Arkoff has doubts about the mission, so Renard kills him. Oh, he also mentions that the uh, the Parahawks are supposed to be returned. We should scrap the rest of the mission. The Parahawks were meant to be returned. <laughs> so, you, you fucking... You've rented... <laughs> you've rented some flying lawnmowers to kill someone, and they've all got blown up. And it's like you going, who's going to fucking pay for these? He's <laughs> taking that back to Avis... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, any problems? No, no. Um, <laughs> do you put petrol back in? Yeah, definitely. Um, is, this, is this guts? Uh, where? Where? <laughs> this guts spear. Oh, there might be. I think I might have drove through some guts. Uh. <laughs> but back to the nearer stuff. The whole holding burning coals and he makes Davidoff hold one as a sort mm. of dominance thing because he can hold it because he doesn't feel pain at all. But, but also, the, there are people who exist who can't feel pain. It's a weird genetic quirk sometimes. And they are genuinely, it's, it's a really hard life because just because you can't feel the pain doesn't mean you're not being damaged. No. So his, his hand should be like screwed for the foreseeable now. He just basically set fire to it. Hmm. It doesn't mean he can use it just because he's a reminder of what matters. It doesn't completely work that way. So every time he gets shot and stuff, he is still being shot. He just hmm. <laughs> just because he doesn't feel the pain doesn't mean he's not compromised. And I have arranged for a plane tonight, but... Uh, but what? We should scrap the rest of the mission. The Parahawks were meant to be returned. People will start asking questions, even of me, all because of his incompetence. Oh, well, well, thanks for telling me. Right? You, you knew I had my worries there. Um, so then Bond and Electra do have it off. 
Good, good. And then oh, after yes. they've had sex, he brings out his sensual pillow talk of saying, so what was it like when you were kidnapped? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit... Uh, oh, oh, mate. mate. Which she's like, it was a bit like that, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah, mate. went on for ages. That's like having it off with um, Simon Weston and saying, hey, what's, what's the matter with your face? <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying sensual lovemaking, and now you've made me think about something that makes me sad. She says, she, she says, it's how I survive. And then she says, um, how do you survive the bond? And he says, I take pleasure in great beauty. <laughs> I take pleasure in great beauty. What's that mean? Nothing. No, That's nothing. Um, I like banging nines and above, is what he means. <laughs> Not age, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. have to point that out. Just, well, no, yeah, y- y- yes, above nine, but even higher. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, talking, yeah. I'm talking tw- <laughs> 20 plus. Yeah. But even then, no, I'm going to say 30, 33 plus. No, that's not true. No, it's not true, is it? So then Davidoff does his new ID because he changes his ID for Arkoff's and then he comes out to his car, opens it and then Bond's in the boot and Bond kicks him and then shoots him twice in the chest and kills him. Yeah, no, that seemed really random to me because yeah. is he looking for the mole? Is he looking for the guy who could tell him everything and logically that's Davidoff? I reckon he puts, he puts, he puts Davidoff in the skip, doesn't he? Yeah. Imagine when the Biffer people turn up on Monday and there's Arkoff <laughs> and Davidoff in there. <laughs> Biffer people. <laughs> this is supposed to be in a blue bin. So he goes to the airport uh, and meets um, the the goons that are waiting for him. And uh, one of them just says to him, let's go, it's getting late. And then he says, where's Davidoff? And Bond, realising he has to be a Russian, goes, uh, he's buried with work. Uh, he was buried with work. Let's go. Get your stuff. They get to the airfield. Uh, and they meet a colonel who says to Bond as Dr. Arkoff, I'm a keen admirer of your research, he says. What he should say is, hang on, aren't you a big fat bloke? <laughs> yeah. I got that. Like, what, so Arkoff meant to look exactly like James Bond, but we know he doesn't because we've already seen him. So. And this bloke's a keen admirer of him, so he yeah, knows what he looks like. Who, he's, a, he's a big deal on this nuclear bomb site. Well, so. <laughs> yeah, but in the old days, because they were online, how often would you actually see an academic's picture it's not like he had a dr arc of calendar you know <laughs> it's just, it's, i'd love to see that yeah. him in a little yeah. bathing suit for, for yeah. july yeah oh leaning over a reactor yeah touching like, his lips and another finger on his buttock yeah. so he, he's he has to pretend to be a russian doctor at this point but then we meet dr christmas jones oh god, oh my god. jesus <laughs> christ i i'm gonna say this this is something no one's said about she is perfectly good in it. She's fine. For what she, she fine, has yeah. to do. Yeah. What it is, is it's the worst role ever written for a person. Mm. Yes. Ever. With the worst yeah. name as well, just for one joke. Yeah. Yeah. She Christmas might as well films. be called Easter Spunk Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't that far from Warm Flash, to be no, fair. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but she says, um, yeah, don't make any Christmas. doctor jokes. I've heard them all. I don't any really jokes. Right. I heard them all. Oh, yeah, any but jokes. Yeah. And he says, I, I don't know any doctor jokes. I don't know any doctor jokes. She'd be like, why are you talking like Dracula? (laughs) Aren't you forgetting? Yes, of course. Thank you. By the way, Zavruskova, we ochen had a show Gavariti Pangliski. Yeah, Chelsea, Fox for a day. Yeah. So Bond goes down there and then catches Renard and puts a gun to his head. He's about to kill him. And I was enjoying this side of Brosnan's Bond because he's literally like putting the silencer on, mm. going through the motions, about to just kill a man. Quite like that. But then Renard says, um, uh, you, I couldn't kill you. You were working for me. You delivered the money, killed King, and now you've brought me the plane. And then he says, oh, well, you'll be dead. You can't enjoy it. And then he says, there's no point living if you can't feel alive. Bond's like, what? But then again... There's no point living if you can't feel alive. Huh? What did you say? Mm. Save Martha. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but then all Watch the guards your... turn up, and then Christmas Jones says he can't be Arkoff. Arkoff is 63. And I'm looking at Pierce, I'm going, 
Well, he could be fucking stone. <laughs> yeah, stone. <laughs> yeah. She should I say drink a lot of water. She <laughs> should say it can't be Arkov. Arkov's a big fat fella. Also, Denise, uh, are you giving someone else shit for being too young to be a proper scientist? Yeah, because yeah. that, that's a little bit hypocritical. Stay though. in the lane, bitch. She'd say. <laughs> um, but the colonel refuses to listen to Bond when he says Renard is stealing the bomb. So then they kill everybody and they're about to get away <laughs> and. Bond manages to overpower everybody, and there's a good shot here I like, where Renard's in the lift, Bond rushes up to the lift, fires, and the bullet hole appears in the glass right where Renard's head is, mm. which is only made bad by the fact that uh, Robert Carlyle flinches. It always annoys me. Shouldn't flinch. Yeah, I can see that. He's supposed to be a hard man. Mm. I'd say, take that again, darling, but don't flinch this time, okay? So then they they escape from the place, and he gets to say his line in his Pierce Brosnan voice when she says, who are you? And he goes, banned. James Bond. <laughs> so you're a British spy. Do you have a name? My name's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> and, and they get outside, and then she says, oh, don't worry, we can track the warhead with the internal locator card. And Bond pulls it out of his pocket and goes, you mean like this one I just found downstairs? And she's like, ooh. I'm going to say now, you. I'm going to hmm? say now that having the locator card in a nuclear weapon be easily removable is a bad design choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just say Maybe it's like a SIM card. Thing. You've got to change it when you change providers. Yeah, I think that's probably what it is. <laughs> Who's your bum? <laughs> Bye. Oh, orange. <laughs> well, but their tariff has got up, so I'm thinking yeah. of moving to three. And But this is the scene, apparently, Sean Connery visited the set. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And he saw Pierce Brosnan doing that, <laughs> that, set, that stunt, and he goes, something along the lines of, fuck that. <laughs> He's just like, they better be paying you. I wouldn't even go in a shark tank. Is it uh, Thunderbolt where he's in the shark tank? Yes. And they lied to him and said that they had enough plexiglass to... Because f- he's supposed to be on one side of the glass, yes. the shark's on the other, mm-hmm. and they, they didn't have enough glass in Jamaica, wherever they filmed it. Yeah. So they said, ah, he won't notice till the end. And then he swam to the end of the plexiglass, and the shark is right there looking at him. He's yeah. like, and I'm getting out now. Yeah, and the water <laughs> and goes brown. furious. Yeah, and the water goes right brown. Yeah. And then we get Pierce Brosnan doing some wonderful acting. And he says, if no sense in living, if you can't feel alive. That's what you said, isn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, that, this impression is good off the reservation now, isn't it? <laughs> pretty much what he says. After all, there's no point in living if you can't feel alive. Isn't that right, Electra? Isn't that your motto? <laughs> <laughs> it's not very fun. That was Jimmy Cagney, plus James Bond, then. Yeah. yeah. Can't feel alive, she. <laughs> <laughs> he then... Puts on his little white coat and goes, you got Stockholm Syndrome. Not a thing, by the way. Yeah, it's not a thing. It's um... That's a large media creation. It's never been recognised by the uh, psychiatric community properly. Because it's, it's narratively helpful in many ways. Yeah. Okay, well, bad psychiatrist there. Uh, he accuses the lecturer of being behind everything and working with Renard, which earns him a big slap. And then she explains away that, of course he would have known about the shoulder. You were wearing a sling at the funeral. And then she switcheroos it and goes, anyway... You were hiding about knowing Renard was behind it all, you shit. She she makes some very valid points, which is actually <laughs> quite quite fun to see. Yeah, yeah. And then you slept with me and fucked off. Yeah, <laughs> you prick. That's, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. And then she finds out Renard is struck again at one of her pipelines, and that ten men are dead. She says to Bond, "Anyway, you're fucking useless. M's coming to sort everything out." And he's like, well, "I'd like to see her jumping off buildings and stuff." <laughs> so you're useless. I've, I've called Judy Dench to come and protect yeah. me. Imagine any scenario. I mean, you could say that if it was like. If you were bad in an amateur dramatics production. <laughs> anyway, you can go, we're getting Judy Dench in. What? To do Run for My Wife? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so Emma arrives at uh, the King HQ in a helicopter. She demands an update from Bond and he shows her the locator card and explains that they can't track it. Um, he also tells her that he thinks Electra is behind everything. And Emma says, well, why would she kill her own father? And he says, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Have the rest of the day off. So then the screens all light up. A cleaning robot thing has been sent through the pipeline and it's got a bomb on it. They find the bomb. They catch up with it. She says uh, the, the, the plutonium's been taken out. It's just going to explode. That's it. Also, and they're it, doing this. She's just moving this bomb in, like a, in a tube in a sort of rockety sled going, going 80 miles an hour. Yeah. With nowhere near, of, near enough slipstream to borrow that. But. Also having a normal conversation with no yep. noise. No noise whatsoever. She'd be like this. He'd be like, what? what? Uh, he says, let it explode. She's like, why? And he goes, just do it, just do it. So they let it explode. And then um, 
Electra's guard, who looks like a werewolf, he says the bomb was a dud, um, but it blew up, and then so Bond's dead. Meanwhile, Bond and Jones emerge from the wreckage of the pipeline, and then she says, well, if we if I don't get that plutonium back, someone's going to have my ass. And he looks yeah, her she's... up and down and says, well, first things first. <laughs> oh, also, mate. she's more concerned about a career than, you know, the terrorist, the nuclear bomb. Yeah. Proper capitalist, fair play to her. Also... <sighs> I know there's been, at this point, 35 years of bawdy talk, mm. but I just don't like it when Bond goes anal. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't it's think he would. It's something about, like, no. No. And just, no. like, oh. Not even for Christmas. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, I've, I've said this before, I think he's very much a straight-down-the-line missionary man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we see later on, he is, yes. Yeah, we do see that later on, you're right. Yeah. Um, so then Bond suddenly remembers, oh, well, Zukovsky's Casino, something dodgy happened right before my eyes, right in front of me, and I didn't notice. <laughs> uh, so then we cut to Istanbul. <laughs> Renard arrives at Lecturer's house, um, and they embrace, and he, he's brought her a half a ball of plutonium, and um, he asks her to weigh it in her hand. Because that's how it works, yeah. And then he goes, yeah. cough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. We'd much better if he was like that. Only joking, love. Whee. Mike Reed should have played him. <laughs> <laughs> and when she's oh. like, oh, Bond's escaped, he should do that. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you doing to me, Electra? <laughs> um, and, she, and then the Electra goes, I've got a present for you. And he's like, oh, oh, what could it be? Like a Game Boy or something? No, it's him in a cupboard. So um, then Renard and Electra go to bed together and he mentions how nice she feels and she goes, well, how do you know? Yeah, it's really harsh. Like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> and um, he um, then punches a table in fury. So, wait, I'm, I'm a bit confused by this because they go to bed together but she's nude. Mm. She's yeah, nude. And he's, but he's still got his T-shirt and jeans on. He's probably like, he's just, a bit unsettling that. It's always probably like, do you mind if I leave this sports vest on during? <laughs> but he's but he's got his jeans on. He's he just rubbed up against her and said, "Oh, that was enough for me." Cheers. Yeah, I think that's probably what he does. <laughs> I probably have to go change my five oh ones now, but thank you. Well, she, she brings some ice from the uh, Bollinger um, to mm. her, help his hand, um, and he and he says he feels nothing. She then gets him basically to say, "Do you want to have a go on my unmentionables?" <laughs> and he's like, "All right." Might as well. I feel nothing inside. Yeah, but he's like, I don't feel anything. He's oh, well, what if I stroke my face with an ice cube? I don't see how that helps. But yeah. Crack on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell, love. Just get the message ready. I can't feel anything. Oh, for crying out loud, Electra. <laughs> um, Zukowski goes to his Caspian Sea caviar factory. <laughs> Not a euphemism. <laughs> Not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent band, Who are you? And how did you get in? I'll call security and congratulate them. <laughs> Drink. And then Bond comes out from behind the door and basically says, what were you doing in the, the casino? And then, mm-hmm. before he can get an answer, the, the, the helicopter with <laughs> blades turn up. Because yep. that's much better than sending like a crack team of mercenaries and machine guns. <laughs> yeah. How can we do this in the most conspicuous way possible? Oh, and again, it's an action sequence, but it's so fucking dull. Mm. It really is. Yeah. I mean, he gets in his bond car, and that gets cut in half, and he goes, "Q's going to kill me." It's got like radio-controlled missile launchers. Was it, oh, that was never mentioned, was it? No, no. Oh, okay, no, it's, it's Q's fishing car. So he's going to <laughs> bow us again. Fishing car. In case he gets attacked by a pterodon or something. <clears throat> and then we get the the really really sad sight of Robbie Coltrane having to jump into a caviar pit. It's a vat of caviar which they have there for reasons. Which now is ruined. Yeah. You shouldn't put I mean, caviar's expensive stuff. You shouldn't just leave it open to the air in a dockside warehouse, should no. you? Imagine someone eating that and going, This tastes like balls. <laughs> <laughs> Sweaty fat balls. <laughs> More so than usual. <laughs> That's just that means it's expensive, darling. Yes, you're right. Mm, yum yum. Tastes like sweaty fat balls. <laughs> should put that on the label. <laughs> Coltrane's yeah. caviar, sweaty fat balls. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bond, Bonds and jo- Bonds and Jones uh, are, uh, are captured and taken to Electra. Uh, and Renard says goodbye to Electra because he's going in the submarine, and she's got a helicopter coming. And then uh, he says to her, "The future is yours. Have fun with it." Okay. It's, it's like he sold her a villa. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, she goes into a little room. Really good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and Bond's been. Um, she's she's found this antique torture chair. They found an antique torture yep. chair. Yeah. Well, that no, they, they they dug it up, right? Yeah. Because wasn't it they were doing some sort of um, excavation? Excavation yeah. in, the, in, the, in the water out in the bay, though. Mm. But it's wooden, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wooden That's, and brass it, and stuff. And it's supposed to be like two hundred, three, four hundred years old. And it's yeah. fine. They just lick a paint, lick a paint. They just keep and hold it. And it's a strangling chair for for strangling people. <laughs> in the, in, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an S&M torture chair, really. It is, basically, yeah. It comes right. with a free lemon dispenser. <laughs> uh, don't we all? Um, um, she's, she's tightening the thing on Bond, and we get some good Pierce. Pierce is very good at doing, like, oh, acting. Oh, yeah, he's got that, yeah. And um, she says, I could have given you the world. And he says, the world is not enough. Family motto. It is the family motto. You find that out in, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Good motto, eh? The world is not enough. Vivian's doing a splendid job. Thank you, Mr. Sable Basilisk. Um, she says to Bond, do you know what happens when a man gets strangled? <laughs> and he's like, oh, typical, I won't be able to enjoy it. Just talking, yeah. We're talking about boners, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Valentine turns up with these men. Robbie Coltrane, action hero. That's not a phrase I ever thought I'd have to write, but... And then he comes in, and it sounds like he's going to do a joke, because he says, I am looking for a submarine. It's big and black, and the driver's a friend of mine. I'm looking for a submarine. It's big and black, and the driver is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, that's like a setup I bit, thought he was going to say, big and black and full of semen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Zukowski is then shot by Electra, but before he goes, he uses the gun and his cane to shoot the, th- the brace around Bond's neck. And Electra, being stupid, goes, huh, he really hates you. It's like, no, you... Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Look again. Yeah. He was three feet away from him. He wasn't going to miss. Yeah. With a really wait, long wait. pistol. Yeah. And then he, uh, Brosnan, chases Electra up the stairs. And this kill's quite cold. Mm. She says, You wouldn't kill me. You'd miss me. And then um, he just shoots her right in the face and says, I never mm. miss. Which, yeah, which is, I did like these moments because he does mm. something similar in um, oh, the Tomorrow Never Dies as well. He, he does kill in cold blood more than I think the others do. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. It's got that in him. And then he sees the submarine leaving, and then he jumps out of the balcony down into the water, and then we get the fucking most interminable twenty minutes yeah. that's ever been committed to Bond screens. Is it 20 so, minutes? It might be more. I, it just goes it might, on. I really, I tuned out fighting in Chromie. You know, again, it looks terrible. It's really, really oh, dull okay. on the submarine. Yeah, the submarine, yeah. the submarine there's no good action sequences. Because it's, so, because it's so close quarters. Mm. You can't, there's no sense of scale or scope. It's just pokey rooms and guys running around and bumping into things. I mean, even the fight he has, Renard, <laughs> is just dull. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really low energy, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Don't, don't muted. Let's cut a long story short on that one. But Renard gets killed because he fires the plutonium bolt out into his stomach and kills him. Yeah, because apparently plutonium bolts are inserted with the same mechanism as a pen with a spring. <laughs> it looks like a biro, doesn't it? <laughs> well, they, 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 are, they are treating this blooming nuclear reactor like it's a Meccano. They're just putting bits in. You, yeah. you can't do that. <clears throat> Imagine if Bond put his knob in. <laughs> and it comes out glowing and yeah. massive. Yeah. <laughs> So then we cut back to the MI6 HQ and they're searching high and low for Bond and Jones. Um, um, and, but they're still in Turkey because the reason is so Bond can say Always wanted to have Christmas in Turkey. That's not even a joke, is it? No. <laughs> no and then sense. they're looking for them and then John Cleese has located Bond's BMW that half an hour ago got sore in half. But yeah, okay. I thought that was knackered as well, but okay. People cable tied it, probably. And <laughs> then they go to thermal imaging to locate them, and they're like, ah, oh, Bond's in bed. That's all right. Yeah. And said, then, said, humans show up as orange. Like, oh, it's getting redder. Oh, God. And then you see a pair of ladies' legs spread underneath him. Because Bond's really motionless for a very long time. Very, I think <laughs> he's died. <laughs> yeah. I think he died on the job, literally. Yeah. And yeah. she, and then goes, 007. Oh, why is she surprised at this point? It happens yeah. literally every time. Every time. And then we get Cleese going, oh, it's a premature form of the millennium bug. Must be a premature form of the millennium bug. A joke oh. which was old by the time it came out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fucking hell, lads. Must be a premature form of the millennium bug. <laughs> 
And then Bond says, I was wrong about you. She says, yeah, how so? And he said, I thought Christmas only came once a year. I thought Christmas only comes once a year. Oh, I ended on that. That's how Bond left the 20th century, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Uh. Joke about come. (laughs) I warned you at the beginning. Yeah. 